Hi guys, this is my 19 week post-op Ruin Y update. Um, so this morning I weighed in at 224.4 or 6, but then later I decided to weigh myself again and that one said 225.6. So I'm going to have to go with the higher one. But either way I lost like 2 to 3 pounds um, in the last week. I've been trying to do better with my whole junk food and crap I shouldn't be eating. Um, I didn't do perfect and today I was craving some junk and I was at Walgreens so instead of regular junk I got some sugar free junk. But oh my word, if you guys have not had these yet, Werther's Original Chewy Caramels that are sugar free. Those are like heaven. They taste so good. And then, while I was in the little sugar-free candy section, I found some Russell Stover's sugar-free chocolate-covered peanuts. They were two for four, so I got two little goodie bags. Um, I suppose it's better than me just eating lots of crap. Sugary crap. But instead, it's sugar-free crap. But... I needed it. Sorry, I'm trying to plug my phone in. It's... Sorry. Alrighty, I'm giving up on that. It doesn't want to go in. Um, so... This has been a crappy, crappy, crappy week at work. Mostly just the past couple days. Um, so... What's today? Wednesday? Monday... Um, usually I go over to the one cafeteria far, far away in the building, and I work there all day by myself, and then I come back to the main cafeteria, drop off my stuff, take out garbage, whatever. So, when I was over there, they called me, and they're like, um, you need to shut down early, be over here by one o'clock, because our, our big manager from the cities is coming, and he needs to have a meeting with us. And immediately I was like, oh crap, that's not good. So, me and my anxiety started working up a horrible scenario in my head. Usually when something bad like that happens and the managers want an immediate meeting, like in my past situations, like the business is shutting down, something is really, really wrong. And my horrible anxiety-ridden visions were not too far off from the truth. Um, so, we got over there. Actually, wait, wait. So the manager, the big wig from the cities, came over to my cafeteria to talk to me first. And he goes, do you have any idea what this meeting is about? And I was like, no, is it bad? And he goes, yes, it is. And he said, you know, somebody from the big plant that we work at, not our cafeterias, they saw some food underneath the, like the serving areas or whatever at the main cafeteria. And this is the third time that they've complained about it. And our contract is up soon and they will not be renewing it if we do not get this taken care of. He goes, you're over there at the end of the day doing a lot of their cleaning. He goes, is this your responsibility? And I was like, they have never before asked me to clean underneath there. When I worked at the other cafeteria, it was mine and another lady's job to like sweep underneath there. And then I would mop underneath there. Um, well, it hadn't been getting done. And... So, I was getting, like, thrown under the bus like this was my job, and I'm pretty sure he had talked to my lead, and she threw me under the bus. So, I've had things going on over there that have been bothering me for months and months and months. There's some stuff, anytime that they don't want to do something, they will leave it for me to do. There's freight that doesn't get put away up above, they have to go upstairs and up above our, our, like, walk-in cooler, walk-in freezer area is where we put like our paper plates, our plastic wear, all that stuff goes up above there. They're lazy, or they have been lazy, and they just put it at the bottom of the stairs and wait till the end of the day when I come back and I have to close all the doors and lock everything up. They want me to do it. And you know, lately with my knee and everything has been hurting, I have no hands to hold onto the railing to support myself. I'm carrying giant boxes up these stairs. And I was like, I, I had told my manager about that, the head honcho boss, not my lead. And so 
Anyway, we all get back to the other side of the cafeteria, the main one, we had this big meeting, and he walked through their kitchen, not mine, their kitchen, and he was pointing out all of these things that were not clean, that needed to be better before we have this other guy come and inspect to see if they will renew our contract or we will all have no job. So when I worked at the other side, I had a cleaning list that I had made and I would just, anytime I didn't have something to do, I would go through the cleaning list and start doing some deep cleaning so that it was always done. I would take everything out of the drawers, clean out the drawers, put everything back in, you know, all of that stuff that has to be done in a kitchen um, on a regular basis. None of this stuff has been getting done and we had been busy and busy and busier than we've ever been before. And so while the head honcho manager from the city was, was yelling at us, kind of yelling, um, my lead was like just bitching him out in front of all of us. And I was like, I don't think that's a good idea. She was so mad. And she has done a really good job. We have made a lot of money there. She's a good businesswoman. But sometimes she's not careful on what is coming out of her mouth. And so after she was so mad about everything going on there after we had our meeting, then the head honcho boss decided to tell her the stuff that I had said to him. So the next day when I came into work, I got cornered and she was like, you can't do your job. And first of all, this is not even my job to put away the freight. Not my job. If they had made it my job, told me ahead of time, I would gladly do it, never say a word about it, just do it. Um, but anyway, she cornered me and she was like, I had an attitude and was angry. And I know that it was only partially because of me and partially because of the whole big situation going on. But the way that she was talking to me was horrible. She was like, uh... So you can't do your job. And I was like, well, right now with my knee, it's really hard for me to carry all the freight up there. She goes, well, you get a note from your doctor saying that you can't do your job. And I was like, okay. So then all that drama was going on. And it has just been a very emotional week for me. I've been trying to get so much stuff done at home. And if you've watched my other videos, you know that during fall time my boyfriend's not around I'm doing everything myself I've got uh, the surgery stuff trying to deal with my food issues my emotional issues my anxiety all this crap and then I've got all the work crap thrown in there and it has been just overwhelming so long story now but that is why I needed some chocolate <laughs> and some caramels but uh, sorry to blah blah about stuff that is not weight loss surgery related but sometimes as you're going through this journey, you are going to have a shit storm of other stuff going on in your life. And the thing that you used to turn to, at least for me, was food. I was an emotional eater and I would pack that down in there. Try to get rid of my problems that way. And now all of the problems still exist in your life. There's going to be more things that pop up and more stressful things. And I'm trying to learn to deal with them. And I don't know what... A good coping mechanism for me is. Um, as a not really child, teen, tween, whatever, I had bad coping mechanisms then too. I was a cutter. I had horrible self-esteem. I've always had issues with anxiety and self-esteem and all of this stuff. From even before I was even very big, like, I was chubby, but I was not, like, a huge overweight person at that time. But I still felt like it inside, and I felt so insecure about my body and my everything, pretty much. So, I've always had bad coping skills. And I'm trying to learn some good ones, but it is not easy. Not easy. Some weeks, if you have used food as a coping mechanism, which probably a lot of us have, you are going to be struggling because even if you go out and buy some sugar-free chocolate, you're still trying to use food. And I'm trying to, you know, they tell you, do things that you enjoy doing. Go for walks. Go, you know, take a nice long bath. Do things that you love and that are relaxing. I work 
and not have a child. You don't really have a lot of time to yourself. And to go for a nice long walk, I have injured my knee. <laughs> oh. So, yeah, sometimes you're going to be going through this journey and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't even know what to do right now to help this situation. I think that's just with anybody in life in general. You know, sometimes you just have a million things going wrong. I don't know. <sighs> if you have an answer, what works for you to kind of de-stress? Let me know. Um, today was my first day of physical therapy for my knee. Um, Friday I have my MRI. So as soon as I know what's going on with my knee, I'll let you guys know. Um, this is already more than 10 minutes long. So I have one really cool thing that I would like to let you guys know. Um, so last year at Christmas time, I begged my boyfriend to get me a Fitbit. I really, really wanted one because I really was trying to lose weight. And this was before I was accepted into the surgical program for weight loss surgery. I just wanted to lose weight. Sorry. Um, my daughter's distracting me. <laughs> anyway, so about six months after having my Fitbit, it was the Fitbit charge, the whole band started like peeling away and it like just turned to crap. It was falling apart. And I was really discouraged because those things are expensive. So I looked for some good deals. Um, I, I upgraded to a Fitbit charge, which I like better. And I'd had that about three months-ish, maybe. And the button fell off, and then the time went wonky. It turned like six hours different. And then, like, it wasn't counting my steps accurately. So, I was really upset because, you know, usually if you read through the crap, like if you want to return a Fitbit, <laughs> I'd actually tried with the first Fitbit, and we brought it back to Best Buy where we got it from. And they said, oh, no, no, you cannot return it to us. You have to send the product back to Fitbit headquarters, whatever. Along with, like, the box and the receipt and all this other crap. And I was like, that is such a hassle. So when I had two of them break within a year's time, I was like, okay, this is enough. I am pissed off. I never complain about a product. I never send food back. I just, I feel I'm a bit old wuss. I'm a chicken and I don't like confrontation. <laughs> so I emailed them and I was, I told them that I was really disappointed and you know, I'd spent all this money on, I do not make a lot of money. And I was expecting their products to be, I don't know, better. And they responded instantly. I wrote it at like maybe half an hour before I went to bed that night. The next morning I had an email from them at like six in the morning. I already had an email from them. They were apologizing, said that they wanted to know where I got them from and like when and they said that they would check into things and they would try to do anything they could to fix the situation. So I think within that same day they said, you know, your Fitbit charge, um, that is a problem that's not really fixable. You know, the button fell off and it was being all wonky. They said we will replace that one. It's under warranty and we'll just send it to you, whatever. Um, then... I think within that day or the next day, I got another email from them saying, oh, and by the way, the first Fitbit that you bought is still under warranty, so we will actually replace that. They asked me to pick a size and a color, and I did, and they said, oh, actually, we only have extra larges in that, so we will upgrade you and send you a... I don't remember what it was called. But it... it the Alta? Yeah, I think it's got, like... A little metal on it too but they were so nice and like sent me two new ones and it hasn't even been a week I got them in the mail today both of them my two new Fitbits so hopefully these ones will last me a while but I was super impressed with their customer service oh my gosh I was not happy with the actual Fitbits that fell apart but they fixed everything so so quick they were so I don't know, so nice in responding to me. The way that they took care of everything, I was just super impressed. So if you guys ever have a, a problem with Fitbit, email them. They were really, really awesome. Um, so yeah, this is a nice long rambly update.
Uh, I don't know. The weight has been coming off a little bit easier this past week. But I promise you it's not because I have eaten perfectly. Because I haven't. I've been trying to get better. But it is not an instantaneous perfect. It's just the crazy journey that I'm on. And I have been under so much stress. I just... Stress probably is part of the reason that my weight hasn't been moving that much in the past couple of weeks. Um, I should just say the last time I updated. Um, but TMI, if you don't want to listen, don't listen. But I've also been super dehydrated and super constipated this week too. So if I can get my water to the right, I'm not drinking enough water. Not enough. Today I've been drinking a ton more, but I think yesterday I didn't even finish a whole water bottle. Like, what, 20 ounces? That's bad. That's bad, bad, bad. Um, yes, so I'm working on upping my water. I'm working on getting my food better on track. Um, yeah. Trying to get some exercise in that does not hurt my knee. Um, at physical therapy they gave me some exercises to do. And then we'll just see from my MRI on Friday what's going on if I have to have surgery or not but eh, I think that's it if I think of anything else I will add it after this but you guys really are amazing like I've had so many sweet and supportive comments on here like it's so nice like my week that I was struggling last week I had so many people be like you know, we are all not perfect. We have struggles. We all do this. Don't worry. And pizza is evil. <laughs> but you guys are super sweet. Um, thanks for listening to my rambly, rambly message today. But yeah, you guys are awesome. Thanks so much for the support. I hope you all have a really good week. I hope this week gets better for me. <laughs> but talk to you guys soon. Bye.